This lecture is going to talk about standard errors. This is the last uh, slide or two from chapter 8. It's roughly page 139 in the course packet. So before getting into the, the details of, of this, let me just mention that there's, standard errors are not a big deal computationally. You're not doing anything wildly different than you were uh, earlier in chapter 8. Um, however, conceptually, there's a, an important difference. Okay, so what is a standard error? Well, standard errors are just like standard deviations. Now, earlier in Chapter 8, you had these four formulas for standard deviations. Here was the standard deviation of a count, standard deviation of a percent, standard deviation of the mean, and standard deviation of the total. The problem with all of these standard deviations is that they depend on knowing parameters that are usually unknown. So the mean and the total both depend on knowing the standard deviation of, of x, and you know again, we usually don't know that. Likewise, the um, uh, standard deviation of the count and of the percent both depend on knowing pi, and again, we don't know these. So in real life, we go off, we do a sample, and we come back with some data, and that data is, well, we've observed a proportion of yeses, or we've observed a sample standard deviation, and we've got to use that uh, rather than this known quantity. So the, the standard errors use a statistic rather than a parameter to get to the standard deviation of these various statistics. All right, so... Standard error estimates the standard deviation of these statistics, and it does that with some other statistic like the uh, sample standard deviation from Chapter 5, the formula is given to you down there, or P. So back to what I said earlier, you'll note that um, there's no real difference computationally. Wherever you had a pi before, you drop a P in. Wherever you had a sigma, you drop in an S. But conceptually, there's a fairly important distinction in that these standard errors are based on um, quantities from the sample and therefore are random variables. Well, let's go look at a couple quick problems. If you go to the next page, here's a list of dollar amounts from recent billings. We're to full, find the average, find the standard deviation, and find the standard error. Well, the easiest way to do this is to go over to SPSS. So let's go bring that up. And I've typed those 13 numbers in. So let's go up to Analyze and then Descriptives, and we're going to go to Explore. And um, I'll copy the variable in. I called it var001, so we'll copy into that, that into the dependent variable list. Go hit OK. And up comes the results. So let's take a few notes from these results, I, I encourage you to click along and try this on your own SPSS. We see that the sample mean, and this is the sample mean, since it's coming from the sample of 13, is 499.38. So I'm going to go over to the Sketchbook Express and we'll take a few notes. X bar is 499, what was it, 0.38. And let's see, what else do we know? The sample standard deviation is given to be 280.70. So S is 280.70. And N is equal to 13. I should probably put a little box around that so we don't get confused. So we've, um, I think we've worked all these parts. Um, let's go back to the, um, the preview. So these are the recent billings. Find the average. Well, the average was 499. That's what we think uh, the typical customer or the typical bill um, uh, costs. And then the standard deviation was 280. So not all of these amounts are 499. Some are larger, some are smaller. Well, what's the typical deviation from that mean? About $280. Now find the standard error. What does this number represent? So the standard error is going to be s sub x bar, and it's just always s sub x over root n. And that'll be 
0.70 divide by root 13. And this works out to be 77.85. Now, what do these numbers represent? If we go back to SPSS for a second, uh, we have a, a uh, box plot. That box plot estimates the, um, the population distribution. In fact, we can make a histogram too. I'm going to go draw a histogram of this. The box plot looks mighty normal, and I suspect the histogram will say the same. So the, the way to think about this, if we go back to uh, Sketchpad, wherever that is, here it is. The distribution of x is going to look something like this. And it has a standard deviation s sub x equal to 280. 0.7, and it, the, the histogram told us that it was fairly normal. Okay, this 77.85 is telling us something about a different distribution. That, that is the distribution of x bar. So it's saying if we could repeat the sampling procedure of drawing samples of 13 over and over again, we would have this distribution. I'm trying to draw it so it's still normal. The normality is going to follow from the normal normal theorem, but it's going to be much less dispersed. And the sample standard deviation of this is estimated to be 77.85, which is substantially less than the 280 up here. Let's look at the last part. The last part says if you, you anticipate sending another 500 bills, what do you think the total will be? All right, well, there's nothing hard about this. You, you have 500 bills and you think that each one, let's just make sure, so 500 bills, and each one is going to be $499.38 on the average. So the product of those will give you about a quarter million dollars is what you expect to pull in this quarter. So 249.692, that's a nine there. All right, so that's the first problem. Let's look at the second problem now. So based on a careful examination of a sample of size 868 taken from a very large uh, warehouse, you learn that 3.6% uh, are not ready to be shipped. So let's go take a few notes on uh, what we've been told here. So I'll go over to the sketchbook and let's see if we can get this to work. N is equal to 868. The um, 11.013 number is the population size, so that's a big N. So let's see, I'm having some issues with my sketch pad this morning. So that's your population size. Now we just learned that 3.6% were not ready to be shipped, so that's a little p. So that's 0 0.036. So part A reads, what is the standard error associated with this percentage? And discuss its meaning. So let's go find the standard error. So the standard error is S sub P. And recall that that is just P times 1 minus P all over N. So in this case, we have the square root of 0 0.036 times 1 minus 0 0.036 divide by 868. And if you do the math, this works out to be uh, 0 0.00623. Then it says, uh, indicate its meaning. Well, the meaning of this is that it's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So let's go draw that. So let's... If we could repeat the sampling procedure of drawing a random sample of 868 many times from this warehouse, the distribution of the, of the percent that we find um, not ready to be shipped would follow a normal normal curve. 
Now, um, really good question is what is the mean of this distribution? Students would, will often um, guess it's 3.6 percent, but that's not the case. So 3.6 is just one uh, you know, estimate that we've uh, derived from a sample, and this estimate could be too high or too low. The real mean is pi. So pi is the true percentage of items that are not ready to be shipped. So we're not exactly sure where 3.6 falls in this, in this graph. But we do know something about how, um, how likely 3.6% uh, is to be close to pi. And that something is from the standard error. So we know the standard deviation of this distribution is, I'm going to call this 0.6, 2%. Looks like we've lost our decimal point there. So, you know, what, what that means is 68% of the time will be within about 0.6% um, of the true percentage that are not ready to be shipped. And if you go two standard deviations out, about 95% of the time we're within about 1.2% of the true percent that are um, not ready to be shipped, meaning pi. Go back to the course packet now. Let's look at parts B and C. Would you be surprised to learn that in fact 4% of the entire inventory, so what, what they're describing there, 4% of the entire inventory, the entire inventory would be a census. So what they're asking is um, whether a, a pi of 0.4 would be um, surprising to us. Then the, the, the part C reads, would you be um, surprised to learn that in fact 10% of the items are not ready to be shipped. Well, let's just think about this. Suppose that pi were 0 0.04. Now, remember I said two standard deviations, or two standard errors, pardon me. So 2 S sub P is about 1.2%. So if I go 2% in either direction, um, that would put me up at about 5 0.2% and then on the low end we're at 2.8%. Uh, okay, so if 4% were the real mean, uh, then the 3.6 that we've observed would fall about here. And there's nothing weird about that. So the answer to part B uh, is no surprise. So we're not surprised since if 4% were the mean, 3.6 would fall right in the middle of that. Now let's go draw this for part C. So here's part C. Uh, in part C we have a normal curve. Uh, the normal curve is centered at 10%, we're told. So let's go back and just reread it. So would you be surprised to learn, in fact, that 10%? Well, if we go two standard deviations out, that puts, at us, puts us at 11.2% on one end, and it's going to put us at about 8.8% uh, on the other end. Now where does 3.6% sit? Well, 3.6% would sit way out here. Here's 3.6%. And what that's saying is uh, it would be extremely likely for us, uh, unlikely for us to ever draw um, a sample of 868, producing a statistic of only 3.6%. Therefore, this probably is not the mean. You know, so the mean really isn't 10%. Uh, the mean is, is probably much lower. 4% uh, is certainly plausible, uh, as would be 3.8% uh, or even, uh, you know, 4.2%. Uh, we, we, uh, we don't know exactly what the mean is. All we can do is rule out 10%. Okay, so that's, um, that's it for these, these first two problems. I'd recommend that you go uh, work a few on your own. Try number uh, three, work some additional ones from Siegel at this point.